Hey coaches, in today's video, I'm gonna go over three different variations that we use with our counter tray blocking scheme. Hey coaches, Coach Mackey here and welcome to my channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. And if you wanna learn about RPOs, passing concepts, and running schemes within the spread offense, then please hit that subscribe button down below. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Now, my previous two videos in this series goes over how we blocked our counter tray against an even man front and an odd man front. And the beautiful thing about this scheme is you can do a couple of different things to change up the presentation to the defense, but it keeps everything the same for your players. And so in today's video, I'm gonna go over the three ways we use the counter tray blocking scheme, but change it just slightly so that the defense doesn't know what the heck we are doing. So the first variation we use in our counter tray scheme is to put the back in the pistol alignment and we're gonna bring the F across in motion. Now, our alignment is not truly the pistol, the, you know, the three and a half, four yards or whatever. Since our normal alignment and shotgun is five yards, toes at five for the quarterback, and the running back's toes are on the quarterback's heels, so that kind of puts him about a yard, yard and a half away. We just put the leave the quarterback where he is and just bump the tailback right behind him. And so in this example, we're gonna be running our counter tray to the left. So again, you can call it anything you want. Lucy, Larry, Love, Lucky, Longy, <laughs> I don't know, anything you want to let the line know that, hey, guys, we are brought counter tray to the left. Now, simple rules, block down, we're doubling there to that backer, center's got him, he has got the first guy pulling, so that's the end, skip pulling around, and he's got this backer, the quarterback is responsible for this end. What we do with our line, our wide receivers now, is we just have them block on, whoever they have, so this this is who, in this look, this is who they're blocking. Now we're going to bring the F in motion. And the quarterback's going to snap the ball right when he is on that B gap. Right inside that guard's outside leg. And what he's going to do is he's going to open up and act like he's going to hand it to him before pivoting and giving it to the tailback. So it's going to look like we're running our speed sweep. And this F has to sell the fake like he is actually running it. So he's selling the fake. He's going. He's going to take these guys with him. And the quarterback's quarterback just flashes it and then he pivots around to the running back who was just taking a six inch step to the right banging it into that a gap right there waiting till this guy crosses his face he's going to be riding that wave finding the front side a gap if that's clear hit it if it's cloudy ride the wave to the outside quarterback you're opening up and you're still reading this end if he crashes you pull and now you run if he just sits there confused like i have no idea what in the world to do then you hand the ball off off, but you still have to carry out your play fake. So here we are. We are in our pistol formation. We've got two by two. We're going to be bringing this guy across and the quarterback's just going to give a quick play fake and we're running our counter to the right now. So now we bring the guy across. He fakes it and then look at that. The, the play action or the little fake causes the de defense to swing wildly to it to the right and it opens up a decent sized gain. Now the next concept is the bash scheme and I stole that from Chip Kelly and what that is is the back, the running back, tailback, wide receiver, whoever you have running it, it goes one way and the quarterback reads a guy and he goes the other. So I still have the same blocking scheme against a four man front. We're running our uh, counter tray to the left and we're still going to be reading this guy but what it changes is we're running speed sweep to the right. So our wide receivers, you are blocking most dangerous man like that. Running back now, when the ball is snapped, you are setting that edge and you are finding the first colored jersey. I like it this way. I like to crack with the Y and replace with the tailback but to get this force defender right here f or your fast guy whatever you want goes across and he's got the ball now the quarterback he's going to get it and he's going to take two shuffle steps shuffle shuffle and he is reading this end if this end attacks the quarterback and is fixing to tackle him then the quarterback gives the ball off and now you have a guy on the edge and you have the numbers because you have every three for three blocking this way if this in flies out with the f now the quarterback after he takes his two shuffles plants his foot and now he becomes the runner and he gets in through the uh, counter tray the bash concept tells the quarterback you are going to be the runner if the read guy gives you a pull so as you can see we're in our two back set we're running bash to the right so it means we've tagged it with an our counter tray to the left these two are going to the left he is our read now you'll notice 
My running back accidentally blocks this guy. He shouldn't. He should bypass him and get a linebacker or safety that's crashing down. He doesn't do that, but luckily the quarterback knows he was going with the bash concept, so he pulls it, gets right in that front side A-gap, and squeezes out about a good five to six yards. This is a great play if you have a running quarterback. I really didn't, so we didn't run that much, but if you have a very strong quarterback, this is what you should run. The last variation is to tag the counter tray with an RPO. And it's kind of different because you're not reading a backer per se. You're still leaving that in unblocked, but you're keying where those outside linebackers are in the grand scheme of things. So we have our counter tray to the left. And what we're going to do is we're going to put fade outs, mirrored fade outs to both sides. So outside guy, mandatory, outside release. I don't care if that corner jams you outside, you still have to do it. Make him turn his hips and run with you. Inside, guys, the stop route is a little bit different. You take your four to five steps out, and then if you have grass, you just kind of settle up. Don't continue to go into where that corner is because you could get rocked. Take the out, settle up in grass. And quarterback, what you're looking for is where are these linebackers at? So in this case, right now, you come up, you know linebackers are tucked inside. This safety right here really isn't that big of a threat, so you're going to throw this out in this area right here. Let's say this safety comes up right now. Well, I can't throw that because to me, that's covered up. So I'm going to look backside. Well, I have this linebacker tucked inside the box, and Noel Mazzoni talked about at the one-back clinic that he tells his guys, hey, if this guy is between the tackle and the wide receiver, to me, that is a throw. That, that, that is your key. Get that damn ball out there to the wide receiver. So right here, he is tucked inside. My guy's going outside, so I'm going to give a quick little flash fake, and I'm going to throw that son of a gun. If... This backer is out here covering it. Now you just go through and you read this end. And the tailback, you're opening up six inches. You're angling for this front side A-gap. And you can either hit in this A-gap or you can bend it. Okay? Quarterback, you're still reading this guy. If this is off, this is off, then you read the end for the same pull to run if, he is gonna, if the end's going to tackle or if the end just sits there, hand the ball off. So we're in our two-by-two. Two. We have got fade outs down here, fade outs up here. Quarterback really doesn't like this because he sees one, two, three over two. Now he's going to go back this way because this linebacker is inside the tackle and the wide receiver. So he knows that's my key. I'm going to catch, give a quick little play fake, and then throw it because that is the easy yards. That linebacker is in the box. I don't like that. I want to get it out in space and let my guy do what he does very well. There you go, coaches. Those are the three variations we use within our counter tray scheme to give the defense fits. Now, if y'all do anything different, please leave a comment below. I love to hear from y'all because that is what makes this profession so great. And before you go, a lot of coaches have emailed me and, and Twittered messaged me about ways they could support the channel, and I love that. I appreciate it. So if you look in the description below, there's a link to my Patreon page, and that's one way you can help me support the channel and make great content for you guys. And until next week, please, let's continue to master the spread, score points, and have fun.